Hello. Welcome to the fourth session of Ignite Talks. Ignite Talks are five minute talks. And after the five, five minute talks, we'll have like 20, 30 minutes of discussion. You can ask questions to all the speakers. You'll see that today we have very uh, different presentations. So uh, as time flies, we're going to start with the first, with our first uh, talk. So get ready to have fun. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Bastien Guerry from OLPC France and this is Lionel from OLPC France too. And we are going to present you Sugarizer, which you can access right now uh, browsing sugarizer.org. Sugarizer is the next version of Sugar. What is Sugar? Sugar is a free software environment uh, that runs on the one laptop per child XOs. And Sugarizer is a HTML JavaScript rewrite of Sugar. And with Sugarizer, we had this very opinionated goal to run it everywhere, on every browser, on every platform. And uh, Sugar is the child of a big family of powerful ideas. It started with Samuel Papert and Cynthia Solomon logo back in the 70s. And then Alan Kay came with Smalltalk and Squeakland, and then Scratch, that everyone knows today. And Sugar, the environment for the OLPC XO, was the host for all these powerful ideas in education. Sugarizer, as a rewrite of Sugar, is the same host for all these powerful ideas, and we want to spread this along. And the Media Lab, was central in bringing all these ideas, but now, thanks to Sugarizer, we can spread this everywhere uh, in the world. So Scratch 2.0 uh, relied on Adobe, which was a closed environment. Uh, Sugar relied on Python, which is not a closed environment, but the stack for developing Sugar was too closely tied to the GNU Linux platform. And Sugarizer as an HTML JavaScript environment uh, and uh, you know, spread uh, the, uh, the audience for developers and users. So the fact that Scratch 3.0 is HTML JavaScript and that uh, Sugarizer is also HTML JavaScript uh, brings new promises in terms of integration and collaboration. So more precisely, what, what is Sugarizer? So it's a warm view of Sugarizer. If you already know Sugar, it's precisely the same, of course, of that Sugar. Uh, in, in show, uh, it's a very simple UI because, of course, it's for children. So uh, it should be sh very simple. You've got the, the user at the middle. Uh, it's a little man in the middle, and you've got activities all around the, the, the children. Uh, we, we've got today bundle in Sugarizer about 30 activities, and it's growing. One important con concept of Sugarizer is the is a journal and reflection. Uh, it's a way to uh, to re retrieve the state of the activities you've done in the past. So in the journal, you've got a log of all activities that you've done in past hours, minutes, days, and weeks. And you could just click on the activity, and you re reopen the activity in the exact in exact state that we, you, you leave it a uh, few, few days or few few hours ago. 
Another important thing is collaboration. So you could play with other users on the platform. So here you've got the collaboration view. Uh, it's a way to see all other users connected on the same server. And you could see that you could play with other users. Here you've got two users that play together to the pent activity. And uh, they, when one user draw on, the, on this pent activity, of course the other users say could see exactly the same in this activity. Uh, what is important, it's, it's, it's very easy for a developer to add this collaboration activity for a new activity. As Bastian said, Sugarizer could run on different platforms and of course, it works also at, on Android. And on Android, we've got a specific feature named Sugarizer Launcher. So you could change the launcher of your Android tablet to replace it by Sugarizer. So you've got an open platform where you could find both Sugarizer activity and other educative activities, of course, like Scratch Junior, directly uh, on the, the, the tablet when you boot it the first time. So this is a screenshot of uh, Sugarizer activity. <laughs> Not very readable right now, but just to show you how we kept uh, very close to this idea of low floors, high ceilings of Sugar. So Sugarizer is just a normal web application, but with specific uh, CSS style sheets and some Java JavaScript libraries. Um, Lionel started the rewrite four years ago. So Sugarizer is a very major project. It's a free software project, and you're welcome to contribute with any bug report or code online on this uh, GitHub uh, repository. And thanks for listening. Just some time, thank you. At the end of the session, we'll have a round of questions. So, ready for the next one. See if that microphone works. <laughs> all right. Uh, welcome, one and all. Uh, my name is Jeremy Millard. Uh, I am a 17-year-old uh, incoming freshman at uh, UC Berkeley. I live in San Diego, California. And my name is Alden Bansmer. I live in Sandpoint, Idaho in the States. Um, I'm still in high school because he had to skip fourth grade. Um, and I, maintain, I am a developer in charge of uh, quality assurance for the server. So uh, we've created this platform uh, called Diamond Fire. Uh, here you should go to the next slide there. Uh, so what Diamond Fire is, is it is a visual block-based programming environment built on the most popular block game, Minecraft. Uh, and so what we do is we host a Minecraft multiplayer server online. Uh, and on this server, regular Minecraft blocks, such as blocks of diamond or wooden planks or cobblestone, uh, can represent programming conventions, such as events, conditions, and actions. Uh, all players have to do is place these code blocks in a sequence, just snap them together, uh, and they can create game logic. So they can spawn sheep or launch fireworks or teleport players. Uh, lots of exciting things. It is very much like Scratch, but it leverages the rich visual environment and 3D worlds of Minecraft. Players can build really exciting worlds and create game logic for them. It's important to note that this isn't Redstone or client mods. We, we've had that come up a couple times, so we put that in there. All right, so this is the application stack. Um, at the most bottom layer of our multiplayer server, we have a <laughs> Microsoft server, excuse me. Um, <laughs> On top of that, we have uh, the Bucket API, which is basically an API that lets us access the more deeper components of a Minecraft world, such as moving blocks around entities, etc. So we use that API on our platform Diamondfire, along with a little bit of MySQL to store player data, and players can connect to this server with a regular Minecraft client. 
So uh, the platform currently uh, sits at around 25,000 lines of code, I think, uh, and we have had over 80,000 unique players uh, try out our platform. So this is a block sequence example. To start any line of code, you always start with an event. In this case, when a player right clicks. Following that, you can have actions and conditions and uh, variables, the, the whole shebang. Um, in this example, we have a condition statement if the player is sneaking, and the two pistons on the side represent brackets. So put stuff inside the brackets and it will run when the statement is true. Inside the brackets, we have a player action which teleports the player with the parameters that are placed inside the chest up top. So we're going to show you a uh, short video of uh, how a player on Diamond Fire uh, might do this coding. Uh, so this is just a very simple example. We're going to make it so that when the player left clicks, when the player left clicks their mouse button, it will add a diamond to their inventory. I can't get the video to play. Uh, let's try the link. <laughs> we'll, we'll just open it in Chrome then. Can you can you hit yeah. the link? <laughs> uh, I think so. While we're at it, I guess I'll explain some of the points up there. Um, how some of the more uh, complex things are. Oh wait. Oh, here it is. Okay, so uh, so right here we're going to uh, enter the coding area of this plot of land here. So as you can see, we are in. You pretty much start with a blank plot of land. Uh, so we're going to place a player event block. That's the diamond block, and we're going to choose uh, what event we want to capture. So in this case, uh, the player left click event when they left click their mouse button. Uh, then all we got to do is, right after this block, uh, we're going to place down a player action block, that's the cobblestone, uh, and for the player action we are going to select give items. Uh, this will add items to the player's inventory. Uh, that chest there on top of the block, that is where we define the parameters, in this case, what items to give the player. So, very simple, drop the uh, diamond in the chest, uh, and now we're going to enter play mode, and uh, when he wags his hand here, that's the left click, the diamond has been added to the inventory. So that is uh, just a very simple version of uh, what can be done on our server. We got it. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, like I said, this is just a very simple example. Uh, using this system, uh, players have created all kinds of uh, extremely impressive games, such as uh, recreations of some Nintendo classics, such as Mario Kart and Pokemon. Uh, we're going to show a short clip of uh, just some of, the, some of the creations, some of the over 10,000 unique games that have been designed by players on our platform. So uh, here's Mario Kart, as you can see, players moving around the track. And this one's Dance Dance Revolution. It's an old-time classic. But along with classics, we have modern uh, mobile apps such as 2048. We have some really, really old games such as chess. This is a time lapse of uh, a chess game that a player built. Uh, that one took a little while. And then finally, we have games unique to Diamond Fire. This is a uh, a parkour generator. The objective is a random train is generated for the player and they have to bounce from block to block to get to the end without dying. So uh, again, all of this has been created by regular players on the server, most of them with no prior coding experience using our platform. Uh, some of the other really cool points uh, about the platform is that because it is built on the multiplayer Minecraft server, uh, when players join, it's very easy to join, all you need is a regular Minecraft client and uh, internet access, and uh, players have access to a rich community of other uh, creators and learners and uh, players to share their games with, to collaborate, to shamelessly steal other people's ideas, uh, lots of fun stuff like that. 
And for new players, we also have a dedicated volunteer staff team. So if a player does not know what to do or has any questions about how to code in Diamond Fire, they can request support and in most cases a player will be on to assist them in less than five minutes. With this setup, we have a thriving community of about 4,000 games each year that we've seen running. And it's a powerful educational tool because it's built in a popular platform, Minecraft. So uh, I think that just about wraps up our presentation. Um, we'll take uh, questions during the question period. There's contact info for us. And we have an unofficial workshop slash demo right after the Ignite talk. So if you want to stick around for that, we'll demo the platform. And uh, if you want to try it out for yourself online, that is the Minecraft server address, MC for Minecraft, diamondfire.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK. Nice to see you. I, I, I saw you already the other days, but you were very busy. Uh, sorry for my English. Uh, my first language is Piemontese, my dialect, so I'm sorry for my English. I'm trying to uh, be the uh, most clear I can. Uh, my name is Alberto Barbero. I am a, a professor in computer science in a technical institute in uh, Piemonte, Italy. Uh, a region on the border with France. I also teach uh, at the University of Turin. I'm teaching coding to future uh, teachers in primary school and I published uh, uh, some books for uh, in computer science and uh, coding for Pearson Italy. Okay, I'm here to talk about this project called Scratch for Disability. Uh, I belong to this association called Discola, Digital uh, School. Uh, Digital School, okay, is an association uh, that is uh, uh, a network of schools for schools. Um, we have the purpose of uh, encouraging ICT innovation in schools in Piedmont and Valle d'Aosta. Uh, we, uh, uh, our organization, is a network of ski. Uh, of key schools uh, that are spread all over the region and uh, we are providing assistance, advice and training to the school of the area um, um, about uh, technologies for network connectivity, computer lab management, uh, secure browsing, uh, coding, uh, use of netbooks, tablets and smartphones in classes. And we also organize uh, uh, workshops, seminars and uh, this year was the, we organized the sixth Number six, sixth edition of the Italian Scratch Festival, uh, a competition, a contest between Italian schools uh, in the creation of a uh, project in Scratch. This year we opened the competition also to uh, primary and uh, junior high school. It was great. It was really, really great because I never saw kids so happy to participate to a contest, to be on the stage, uh, to talk in front of 300, 400 people. It was very, 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 very good. Better than with the uh, adolescent, with teenager. It was even better. Uh, uh, no, one second. Okay. Um, the using of code in Italian classroom is increasing year after year from primary to high school. Uh, for sure, Scratch is uh, uh, one of the tools most used because of, of all its features, you know very well, and user friendliness. Uh, and for the open and versatile environment that uh, allows the users to create uh, infinite projects. Uh, and this feature in particular is really powerful compared to other existing tools. So we, what we decided, why not to try to use uh, Scratch in the field of education of disabled children or for students with special needs education, uh, special education needs, uh, dyslexia in premise, or for speech rehabilitation. So we decided to start with this project called Scratch for Disability. Uh, with the, the following purposes. Uh, first, we want to train, we want to teach 
uh, the use of Scratch to special education teachers, speech rehabilitators and other people working with uh, disability, disabled children. Then we want uh, encouraging them uh, to uh, try to use Scratch with those kids and at the end collect all the experiences next May, all the experiences and analyze the, uh, the result to understand uh, what coding works well for special needs education and rehabilitation. Uh, what we have done, uh, um, we had the first convention in Turing uh, to launch the project uh, in uh, March 2017 and we were surprised because more than 200 uh, people, uh, especially uh, teachers and, um, uh, and uh, speech habilitators and psychologists uh, were attending it and uh, after that we collected subscription to the program and uh, uh, in October 2017 so in, in a few months we are start we are starting training classes in scratch all over the Piemonte region okay uh, at this moment more than 220 people mostly special education teachers and speech habilitators from all over uh, Piemonte have already signed up for the project and they are going to be trained for a total of 12 hours of coding okay to start and then we are uh, we have different uh, meetings along the uh, the school here to understand what they need. Everything is for free, okay? We don't get any money, everything is for free. Due to the arrival of additional requests, we will reopen subscription at the end of summer. Meanwhile, we are in the process of developing tools uh, for training future trainees. Uh, we hope to have them available for sure in September, ready to be used and shared. Uh, we are going to create a set of exercises which will help new trainers uh, develop additional ideas and make further the suggestion for scratch user use in children's daily activities. Um, in the future, uh, May 2018, where with the collaboration of the University of Turing, we will collect all good practices and uh, we want to evaluate the effectiveness. Uh, we will collect all these uh, information and the good practices and share those in our website uh, www.associazionedisco.it slash s for d scratch for disability. We hope to see, I'm pretty sure that we are going to see uh, many good practices because uh, I know that they are already existing, I check on the internet, so I know they are existing, but uh, we want to, uh, to do the, our own, okay? Thank you very much, and if you have any question, please, uh, after the uh, other two or three, uh, Ignite Talk. This is my email. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now it's time for our rock star. You join us on the stage, please. <laughs> yeah, big round of applause for him. <laughs> Organizer and presenter. Let's uh, meet the mute here. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Good. Oh, there's a timer. Um, yeah, welcome everybody. Uh, incredible, so much people here at the end of a long day again. Uh, this is Juk van Montfort and uh, I'm organizing this conference. As part of it, I set up a system for collecting proposals and to test the system, I put in this band liner. So it works, I'm in. Um, I was accepted. Um, and I'll just will tell you a few minutes about how I came here. I'm a little over 50 years, so these are all pictures from the 60s uh, when I grew up. And um, the environment was heavily influenced by the US. Uh, as Well, I, I self lived in the US 69, 70, but friends lived there uh, 63, 64 in Berkeley. And there were wild things going on in Berkeley in, the, in those years, especially with the education of youngsters. So there were well, there were, uh, I went to the first kindergarten in the Netherlands, which was totally Berkeley inspired. And there we could do everything we wanted. Uh, it was an old house where one of the rooms was a full size sandbox. This is the sandbox in my, I have rich parents with a garden, and in the garden was a sandbox. And um, the, the title of the talk is inspired by Mitch Wesnick's quote. 
uh, Scratch is our attempt to bring the sandbox to the screen. That made me thinking, why, why bring the sandbox to the screen? And looking in my own photo books, I realized that I had a lot of fun in the sandbox. And, um, and yeah, uh, you know, until this age and a few years later, so the, the years before I went to school, I was learning 24 7. I was learning, no, it was impossible not to learn. I was also learning while playing, and I was especially learning while being in the sandbox. And I didn't know I was learning, I didn't know what I was going to learn, and there was no lesson plan here on the site. And, um, yeah, if you, that, that sounds like the Holy Grail, you know, if you get, can get such powerful learning environments inside the computer. Um, okay, second track. I'm a mathematician, I worked for the Dutch railroads and I switched when my children were five, six years old and at school they were pushed in computers without a plan. And I thought, well, let's try to do something creative with these computers. It was extremely complicated, nobody was waiting for me. And um, but I wanted to do something with the computers which would enrich their educational experience instead of uh, early introduction to office life. Because that was the idea that most schools had about computers. It would be handy if people understand Windows or Office and later on if they can Google. And, um, and I was thinking, no, that uh, the computer has some benefits which you can do only with a computer. Let's try to do, well, anyhow. And it, it took a while, and then I encountered Scratch, and since then we are family. Um, and over the years, I learned that Majestic and team did an incredible job bringing the sandbox to the screen. Um, but there's another question, a totally different question. That was the question I was working on to use this screen in an educational environment. So the, the mission I'm on is probably, Scratch was developed for the computer clubhouse. My mission is probably to bring the computer clubhouse inside the school. And every now and then I think, why don't schools do yeah, the, 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 the things that has to be done, road drilling uh, in the morning, so that we have some time for real learning in the afternoon. Why don't, yeah, yeah like that. Um, that's why I'm here. Yeah, I wrote down, so yeah, uh, so these first years of my life were a permanent, very uh, good learning environment. I was always multitasking, you know, peeing, feet, uh, look at what I'm working with, and, um, and I could do this because it was safe. And I could, I wanted to do this because I was um, uh, well, uh, invited to explore. And this is probably the slide that tells me that five minutes are over. I uh, happily dance with you tomorrow and um, wish you a great uh, continuation of conference. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, we've got one last presenter, that is me. <laughs> and it happened the same, it happened in Barcelona, and the same happened in Amsterdam, is that when you're hosting 25 Ignite Talks, uh, you don't prepare your own Ignite Talk. So what I did is just like, I mixed uh, some of my presentations, um, and I need someone to count the time. <laughs> Now, I think I have it here, uh, yes. Um. Uh, yes. Okay, I'm Frank, I'm from Barcelona, I'm a primary teacher, and I've been using Scratch for almost 10 years. So now, um, and when I think, uh, when did everything started, so, I think it started just here. 
It's 1989, and yes, it is me. And I found this picture, and uh, here I was doing this. I was programming with uh, with Logo. So I think that's the really the start of everything was there because time passed, and one day I decided that I wanted to be a teacher. And when I decided to be a teacher, I had a problem because um, I, I was very worried with the relationship with between media and uh, children. So in schools, we ask our students to write newspapers, uh, to record some radio t thing, and even to, to record some um, news at the time in TV. Uh, I remember uh, when I was a kid, uh, my teacher with the camera and the map of Spain, and the weather in Cantabria, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but what happens to video games? Uh, our students were using video games, but they were not creating video games. And they were not creating video games because uh, it was very difficult for them to do it, till <laughs> Scratch appeared. So um, in 2008, uh, my students uh, wrote their own video games and published them online. And they were really, really, really happy. But I didn't have enough. So uh, after that, I discovered the microphone, the power of the microphone. You just plug a microphone. Here you have a story. It's an interactive story. Uh, there's a girl. He, she has a party, uh, but their hair is um, uh, very wet. So they create a cardboard hair dryer, just plug in a, a microphone, and when they blow, the loud nose made the hair. Ah. So she was ready for, for the party. So these two girls were creating a story um, using the microphone. But I didn't have enough, so um, wow, I discovered Lego We Do. And my students then developed interactive stories uh, that had um, um, a reaction in the real, in the physical world, and they made the, these attractions for a, for a park. But then I discovered Makey Makey! And my students, they make amazing projects mixing music and flowers and everything. It was wonderful. This is a spring, um, a spring welcome piano. Um, so, uh, but I didn't have enough. So, um, I, I, I met this, this kind of robot it's called Isoy, and my students use it to make theater plays. Theater place. There were two robots that can talk and can be programmed, of course, with Scratch. And, and you can see the beautiful costumes. And as you can imagine, um, I don't know how to sue. So we ask the grandmothers of the students to come to school and to help them to design um, the costumes. So at the end, 10 years after all this, is why am I doing all this? And I love this quote from uh, Mitch Resnick. No? For us, coding is not a set of uh, technical skills, but a new way of literacy and a way of expressing themselves. So when I see all these pictures, I see how my students have expressed themselves, how they have told stories to the others, how they, can, they have shared video games. And, and that's it. It's three minutes and fifth or something. I have one more minute. I have one more minute for one just last slide. Because um, if you remember, the title of my talk was Our Journey with Scratch. Uh, so my journey with Scratch, it, it is impossible to, to describe without this. This. Three amazing Scratch conference in Europe. Uh, I said it a lot, but thank you very much. We are now a big, big family. Thank you all. So now it's time for questions. So I will ask all the speakers to join us in the stage. A big applause for them also. And I'm sure we've got questions for all of them. Uh, so questions. We had five. Uh, to the Minecraft people, how long did you play Minecraft? And um, how did you come upon the idea of making this website? And how did you collaborate? 
So Jeremy and I started Minecraft about the same time completely coincidentally, um, which is, we like to go by patches, so 1.2.5, but to put that in just perspective, um, uh, June 2012. Yeah. I was 12 at the time. <laughs> um, I uh, had the um, idea to do the server. We, we didn't actually know each other at all um, until I, I ran uh, a Minecraft server just sort of for my own personal enjoyment. Um, where I coded games onto it in Java for, I think, about a year and a half. Uh, that was around, I think, two and a half years ago. Um, and uh, that's when I was really kind of, you know, getting into coding for the first time. Uh, and I, I sort of, I found that I really enjoyed being able to, you know, take an idea and kind of bring it to life within Minecraft and have other Minecrafters enjoy it. And, uh, and so I thought, you know, what if I can uh, bring this to, you know, other kids who are also interested in, uh, in doing that sort of thing and uh, allow them to do it without having to, you know, learn Java and go through the weird process of setting up servers and such to make it more accessible. So. And then, so Jeremy actually had two servers. Um, the first one was Diamond Fire 1.0, where he just coded his own games. And um, that's actually how Jeremy and I met. I was bored, I wanted to play a Minecraft game. I looked on the internet, he was advertising a server. I joined and I played his games, they were really good. Um, and then a while later, Jeremy got the idea, hey, let's build a create your own game server. So he started on that and I started playing that platform. And I am kind of a proof of concept for the platform because I started on the platform before I started coding on the platform. So I, I did diamond fire coding for a couple months and then I picked up real life Java coding from diamond fire. And then I'm fortunate enough, enough to, to um, last year start working on the platform. So. Good, thank you. More questions, comments, Drew, yes. Thank you also for um, Alden and Jeremy. Um, your story as a teacher, um, I, I find your story inspirational as I was at the Teach Meet last night and you're a credit to, to the, uh, you know, your generation for how you've chosen to take something that uh, many, many kids will use and not do anything as inspirational as you have. They'll just be passive players. Whereas you have chosen to do something better um, than that by actually creating something that's a benefit to them. So well done for that. Um, Thank you. How, um, how, how do you see it? If it um, has it the potential to grow? Could you cope with a million subscribers, for example? Are you ready for, for its popularity? So uh, the scalability, the main uh, issue of it, I think, is just supporting all of those players uh, in their learning of the platform. Uh, we have, as we mentioned in our presentation, a volunteer staff uh, that um, work with players to uh, help them figure things out if they need help. Um, and so I think sort of some more robust tutorial things are in order, but from, from a technical perspective, uh, the server is sort of subdivided into various nodes that hold all, hold all these players' games. So uh, we can scale in that sense fairly easily, but uh, as far as the community sense, that's more of a challenge. Okay, one question that, what? It's my So, uh, Minecraft gang, you're awesome. Um, I have a question about disabilities. Um, what can you tell me about um, blind students? Good question. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, in my school, uh, um, uh, as I remember, we had uh, two or three students uh, with that kind of problem. And um, fortunately, uh, the, the health department, local health department, they have a, a very smart guy who is uh, 
uh, in charge of uh, bringing to school all the tools they need for, uh, for, for, for their daily activities. Uh, so we, don't have, we didn't have to worry too much because uh, uh, the public system in Italy uh, offers that kind of, uh, of tools for free, uh, I guess magnifier or uh, uh, special software for computer. Uh, I, I don't know about scratch and that kind of disability. I really don't know because it's something new for me. So I don't know what to answer. I only uh, can tell you that uh, in my experiences, uh, uh, other people, expert in those kind of technologies, provided us all the technologies in need of these kids. Good. We still have time for two, three questions. Okay. So thank you to Yoke and Frank and all the organizing committee for this. This is a wonderful conference so far, Mads and all the folks who are here. Um, where are we going in two years? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. And then I'll ask a question as well. Um, well, I'm, uh, it's not up to me. Um, but if it was up to me, it would be in Africa. And with me supporting it, but not organizing. Really, I, 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 I've, I've, I've done my part. <laughs> and I have, I don't know if you are allowed, do we, mo are we allowed to ask questions to each other? Of course, of course, of course. This, this is Scratch Conference. So um, I was just wondering why the two of you uh, make your proposal to a Scratch Conference and not to a Minecraft Conference or whatever conference. Um. I did actually submit a thing to uh, Minecon uh, last year. Um, wasn't picked, you know. That's the short version. <laughs> Ooh. And the other issue is I uh, lived in Indiana, which is the Midwest portion of the United States at that time, and the parents said no. So. Well, oh, I think. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Scratch is more reputable than Minecraft at this point. Like, Scratch has more future paths than Minecraft will, which is kind of the proof of uh, the concept of Scratch, even. It, Scratch can extend infinitely, Minecraft can only bring you so far. I'll rephrase. Uh, the thing with Minecon <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that I, I personally take issue with is uh, just sort of. Um, the format that they tend to do things, it's not so much a presentation format as just a long Q&A. And uh, I mean, you know, these, these kids are wonderful, but some of the questions uh, are totally irrelevant to whatever. And so um, it's, it's kind of just, it's difficult to work that. And uh, we've just, we've had an excellent experience here. So uh, thank you all for uh, being wonderful. I just, exactly, a comment for Dan Garcia and then maybe a warning for the boys. I wish you joy and energy having this guy coming as your student in September as a teacher. I said, if I had these coming through the, the walls, it would be fantastic. And gentlemen, the next time you come, will you bring some of the girls too? Let's find them and get, and get them moving and bring them. Is that okay? Yeah. There you go. Well, I have a question about sugarizer, and that is, why do I want to use it, and what happens if I have no internet connection? So I answer the second question. I leave you the first. The, the, the sugarizer uh, today is used in two schools in France, and they have no internet. So in each classroom, you have 25 children, and they use Sugarizer on Android tablets uh, with all the Sugarizer activities. And um, they collaborate thanks to a server that is on a Raspberry Pi. So Sugarizer actually is two things, three things. One is the server that is on the Raspberry Pi, collaboration and all that stuff, and even content. Uh, another one is the client that they have on the tablets. And the third one is the application that people can download as normal Android or iOS application. So we are very small, very small association, but we are working very closely with the schools. And we have uh, like 
great surprises and for example the story about a grid paint activity that I let uh, Lionel share because this is his activity and it's a nice story. Well, okay, I tell you that. <laughs> Lionel started to program a grid paint activity. I don't know if you know it's like a paint activity, but with some with some triangles. Okay, and the, we discovered the children were using it to learn about three dimensions, and you know, drawing cubes and all that stuff. And it was a surprise to us and to the teachers. And then we started to share this and so on. So we are offline, completely offline right now. And, and we've got experience of XO deployment, and we've got a deployment, all participants have a deployment of XO laptop in Madagascar, and we have no internet, so we are very aware of problematic of offline. So, of course, Sugar Isa is think to, to work offline too. No more questions? So, thank you very much. Uh, and if you like the format of the Ignite Talks tomorrow, there is the last round, the fifth Ignite Talks session in the Scratch conference in Bordeaux. Thank you very much and hope to meet you uh, mm. in some hours at the marge of uh, the roof. Yes, it actually it opens already at six, but some people will stay here for the informal after yeah. workshop. The building closes at nine, this building. <laughs> and a second answer to the question of Dan, uh, isn't it about time that SNAP hosts a counter-conference welcoming all the scratchers <laughs> in Berkeley? 